Uh, before we start, if you could understand when I speak in English, put your hands up. We have a problem. We do, I know that. These are very important to me. These are more important than these. <laughs> No, no, no. I want to have a si si simultaneous translation. So you do it? Can you do it? Right. Okay. So when I speak, I stop, you translate. Okay, Insha'Allah. Insha very good. We're going to have a very nice evening. Insha'Allah. Alhamdulillahi wa kafa wa salatu wa salamu ala ibadihi alladhi nastafa خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعض فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وأحل الله البيع وحرم الربا صدق الله العظيم respected Imam, respected chairman, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. No need to translate that. <laughs> Our subject is entitled The Prohibition of Riba in the Quran and Sunnah. And we will divide the subject into two parts. In the first part, explaining riba. And in the second part, responding to riba. You can sit down. Okay. Uh, Tuan Syekh akan berbincang kepada kita berkenaan dengan halangan, prohibition, halangan atau kosongan antara Quran dan Riba di dalam Al-Quran dan Sunnah. Yang pertama, dia akan berkenaan kepada berkenaan dengan berkenaan dengan Riba dan kepada yang kedua, dia akan berkenaan kepada bagaimana untuk menentang Allah has made business halal and Allah has made riba haram and he has said so in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah. When Allah makes something halal, it is halal forever. And when He makes something haram, it is haram forever. In Surah to Tawbah of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this ayah. Ba'ad a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Ittakhadhu ahbarahum wa ruhbanahum Arbabam min dunillah. They took their priests and they took their rabbis as gods and lords beside Allah. Allah. 
Wal Masih Ibn Maryam And they did the same With the son of Mary The messenger of Allah Taking him as God Beside Allah وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا أَنْ يَعْبُدُوا إِلَهًا وَاحِدٍ But they had not been commanded but to worship one God. Mereka tidak They have not been commanded but to worship one God. La ilaha illahu There is no God beside him Subhanahu amma yushrikun Glory be to him Far removed is he From this act of shirik Glory be to him Far removed is he From this act of shirk A man came To the Prophet Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam And said O messenger of Allah Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam But the Jews And the Christians Do not worship Their priests And their rabbis How could Allah say so? The Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam responded and said Did they not make halal what Allah made haram? That is their shirk And did the people not accept what they did, that is their shirk. And did the people not accept what they did? So, we now know that when the priest and the rabbi make halal, what Allah made haram That is shirk Whoever Makes halal What Allah made haram Has committed shirk Today, all over the world, everywhere in the world, riba which Allah made haram is now halal. Meaning, it is now legally permitted all over the world. <laughs> 
Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam spoke about things like these which are munkar, evil, evil. And he said, Man ra'a munkaran fal yughayyiruhu biyadi. Whosoever witnesses that which is munkar must change it with his hand. And وَإِلَّمْ يَسْتَتِعْ فَبِلِسَانِ And if he cannot change it with his hand, change it with his tongue. And if he cannot change it with his tongue, change it with his heart. With his heart. And that is the weakest stage of Iman faith. Today, riba is halal all over the world even in Mecca and Medina and therefore we must try to change it with our hands And if we cannot, then change it with our tongue. And if we cannot, then change it with our heart. But if we are not making the effort, even in our heart, to change it and get rid of riba then we have no faith no faith iman yeah. Among the signs of Akhiru Zaman is that a gas will come out of the sky and whosoever inhales that gas and has even as much as a mustard seed of faith in the heart will die. Yes, yes, will die. When that comes, then if we are not even with our heart we are not attempting to get rid of riba then we will not die we remain alive when that gas comes if we are a people who are not attempting to get rid of riba even with our heart then we will not die we remain alive so you'll see the sheikh in a big hat, long gown, giving long 
Chirama quoting Quran hadith <laughs> but when the gas came he did not die no faith <laughs> So when we teach this subject to you, you cannot go home, eat roti chanai and go to sleep. You have to do something. You have to do something with your hand or with your tongue or with your heart to fight riba. If you do nothing, then when you go into the grave, you might find to your surprise that you are not a Muslim. Riba is money lending work. The money lender. He lends money and he lends it on interest. That interest is riba. When Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam went on Isra and Mi'raj Allah allowed him to look into Jahannam and in Jahannam he saw some men with big bellies and in the bellies there were snakes and he asked Jibra'il alayhi salam, who are these men? And Jibra'il alayhi salam said, these are the men who consumed riba. <laughs> Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam cursed all four. Satu, dua, tiga, umpat. All four. And he said they are all equally guilty. The one who takes riba. Satu. The one who takes. Takes riba. Satu. The one who gives riba. Gives riba. Dua. The one who records the transaction. Tiga. 
and the two witnesses records yeah records and then the witness witness yeah and he said they're all equally guilty Why has Allah prohibited riba, money being lent on interest? Why? In the Quran, he has given several reasons but I but I will give you only one tonight hmm? Allah says Allah has made business halal and he has made riba haram indicating that to lend money on interest is not business Allah What is business? Answer A transaction is a business transaction when you can make a profit or suffer a loss. That is business. Okay, now remember, I'm seeing some of you talking, so I can ask you, what did I say? What is business, huh? This is the first warning, eh? First. First warning. In a business transaction, you take a risk. So you can make a profit or you can suffer a loss. Allah wants you to do business. Because Allah can now take from some and give to others. Allah does not want that wealth should be only amongst the rich. No. Allah 
So when everybody does business, then Allah can redistribute wealth and the poor can become rich and the rich can become poor. But when riba takes over, instead of business, then the rich will now remain permanently rich and the poor permanently poor. When riba takes over instead of business, then the rich will grow richer and the poor will grow poorer. When the poor a permanently poor that is zulum oppression and because riba leads to zulum oppression Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the very last revelation of the Quran, very last one, declared war on riba, war on the moneylender. today in every town and every city riba has taken over from business all over the world today there is oppression because of riba <laughs> Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam told us that in akhir zaman not akhir not akhir akhir I don't want to hear akhir zaman in akhir zaman he said, a slave woman will give birth to her mistress. And so we came to know that in Akhir zaman there is going to be slavery. Jadi, 
we know that Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said about the slave he said give your slave to eat the food that you eat so if you're eating masakan padang masakan padang give your slave to eat the food that you eat and give your slave to wear the clothes that you wear Today, my daughter is a slave. She is my Indonesian daughter. And she is a slave. She is forced because of poverty to leave her home in Indonesia and work in Singapore as a maid. My daughter is the last one to sleep at night and my daughter is the first one to wake in the morning she has to work all day every day no holiday sometimes she has to cook lahmul khinzir Sometimes she has to do other things I cannot mention. And at the end of the month, she has paid the wage of a slave. We say, Shame on you, Lee Kuan Yew. <laughs> we say shame on you, Singapore. <laughs> you pay her 300 Singapore dollars a month. No Singaporean woman will work for that. That is oppression. And Allah will destroy you. Allah will destroy every town and every city. Because of oppression. In Su Suratul Isra, Suratul Isra, listen to the ayah. Wa imin qariyatin illa nahnu muhlikuha qabla yawmil qiyama. أو معذبوها عذابا شديدا 
كان ذلك في الكتاب مستورا and not a single town or city will escape destruction Allah will destroy every town and every city And those which escape destruction, Allah will punish them with terrible punishment. This is something inscribed in the Kitab. Sometimes the money lender lends you money because he wants to get rich and he wants to stay rich. But sometimes the money lender lends you money because he wants to make you his slave. When you cannot repay the money lender and the Riba is adafa mudafa, constantly multiplying. Then you are trapped. You cannot repay. You become his slave. Now, let me introduce you to Dajjal. <laughs> Nabi Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam told us that in akhiru zaman Allah created someone who is called Al-Masih Al-Dajjal and in Akhir Al-Zaman Dajjal will be released into the world. How much more time for the Azan? Isha is the two more minutes. Two more minutes. He is known as Al Masih al Dajjal because he has to impersonate the true Messiah. The true Messiah is Nabi Isa alayhi salam. When Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, then he is going to rule the world. So Al Masih al Dajjal must also try to rule the world. 
Today, riba is all over the world because of the job. And he has used riba to enslave Indonesia. So he can make it now be easier for him to rule the world. Let us stop there. I have explained to you that this riba which has taken the whole world in its grip has come from Dajjal and his mission is to so enslave us that we will not be able to resist him and he will rule the world tomorrow from Jerusalem. I wrote this book, Jerusalem D. Dalam Al Quran, ten years ago, to explain the subject. Now, Alhamdulillah, we have the same book in Bahasa. But notice, Bahasa is twice the size of English. See? I also wrote this book about 15 years ago The Prohibition of Riba in the Quran and Sunnah to explain the subject but we don't have translation in Bahasa as yet there is another form of riba. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said, if you meet a man coming to the market with his lorry truck durian, and you buy his durian from him before he could enter into the market and when he enters into the market he finds that he could have gotten a better price in the market Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu waslam said that is riba If you like durian, put your hands up. Oh, okay, some don't like durian, okay. <laughs> now, what you did was you exploited his ignorance of the market price to rip him off, rip off everybody in the sun, rip off. That's riba. Menipu, 
the biggest rip off the biggest rip off ever to have taken place in history is this rip off paper money it is bogus bogus fraudulent fraudulent and haram it is more than that if you take a piece of paper and you print a picture and you put a number and then you give to this piece of paper an entirely fictitious value you committed shirk only Allah can create wealth out of nothing but Dajjal has created wealth out of nothing that is shirk and we have accepted it so we are also in shirk what should we do how should we respond this is money in the Quran this is money in the Sunnah dirham and dinar we have to bring back dirham and dinar <laughs> Malaysia is the only country in the world whose leader Dr. Mahathir <laughs> Dr. Mahathir who is not Alim <laughs> is not Alim Dr. Mahathir called for the return of dinar how to bring back dinar and dirham this is my suggestion if you have a better idea you must tell me I say go to Kampung and in the small market small market teach them do not sell for paper and do not buy with paper and bring back dinar and dirham in a small market in Kampung
in Medina in the time of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam if there was a shortage of dinar and dirham they used dates as money dates okay I have a question to ask nobody talk no talking I have a question to ask if you know the answer put your hands up but do not talk Good. this is the question in the market in Medina when there was shortage of gold and silver dinar and dirham they used dates as money if you are in Java in Indonesia and you have shortage of dinar and dirham what would you use as money? Java, eh? Java, Java. Not Sumatra, Java. Java. Okay, come on. What will you use as money? No, no, not you, not you, not you, not you. Okay. Come on. You get a durian if you answer correct. Nobody wants a durian? <laughs> All right, tell them. Salah. What he said? Salah. Salah. Buah salah. What's that? There's a kind of fruit. Fruit? No, 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 tabule. <laughs> yeah? Nasi, correct. Rice. Uh, nasi. Uh, yeah, Rice. 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 Nasi. Okay, next question. Ever heard about Fidel Castro? Huh? Uh, the island of Cuba? Cuba? So if you're in Cuba and you have shortage of dinar and dirham, what will you use as money? Tobacco, no, 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 tabule. No, Fidel Castro don't smoke anymore. <laughs> Answer? 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 Huh? Sisha, no. Sugar. 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 Okay. So, how do we respond to riba? One response is, listen carefully, one response is, and this will be pleasing to Allah. Gasoline. Huh? Gasoline. No, no. Sugar. No, no. How do you respond? I said, this is one response and it will be pleasing to Allah. What response? It is that you should try to establish a community which is free from riba. <laughs> You can do it. You can do it. 
All that you have to do is to go to the remote countryside, Kampung, and build a small community. And in that community, no banks, no money being lent on interest. And in that community, dinar and dirham. And in that community and market, no paper money, no electronic money. Now we have 15 minutes for questions. Money changing, money changing, I'm going to have to be more technical now, you won't understand me. Money changing in the past was when people brought coins and wanted them changed for other coins. For example, you would bring gold dinars minted in Europe. And they are of different sizes, different weights, different purity. And you wanted to change these dinars for other dinars, which can be used in this market. The Prophet ﷺ said, once you are exchanging gold for gold, it must be equal for equal. So if this one is one kilogram, this one must be one kilogram. Money changing today is something else. When you go to Masjid India, to the money changer, he is changing from US dollars to ringgits. He is changing from Singapore dollars to ringgits. <laughs> we have said that this entire system oh, no need to translate now we have said that this entire system of paper money is bogus it's fraudulent it's haram we can say so because we have studied international monetary economics and so we know we know our subject okay Unfortunately, international monetary economics is not taught to students who are studying Islam. No. So they come out and the Mufti gives fatwa. But the Mufti does not know international monetary economics. So if you differ with me and you say paper money halal, no problem. No problem. Let the people choose if they want 
to accept my view as correct, they can accept it. And if they want to accept your view as correct, they can accept your view. Okay? So you can differ with me, no problem. But if you say I am wrong, and you want to shut me up, you want to prevent me from speaking, you want to ban me. You want to come after me with boxing gloves. Then I'll challenge you. Come, if you think you are right, that this paper money is halal. And I am wrong when I say it is haram. Then come and let us both raise our hands and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does not sleep. And let us ask him to curse. And let us ask him to punish with the greatest possible punishment. And with a punishment that will last forever. Whichever of us is wrong on this issue. Hmm? And so money changing today because it involves the use of the paper haram. is also a haram exercise. We had... A money changer in this part of the world who was involved in money changing finance huh? and he listened to my lecture on Islam and the international monetary system and that man realized that what I was saying was correct and he decided to close down his business and he decided to turn instead to dinar and dirham. And that man invited me to come to Malaysia. And that man paid my travel expenses for me and my wife. So we can be here. He was a money changer. And then he realized it was haram. And he changed. So may Allah bless him. I mean, how important is understanding the Al-Quran is original form in Arabic for the last days and after life, and it is sufficient to understand it only in translation? Okay, question is how important it is for us to study the Quran? in Arabic. My answer to you is if you depend on translations you can be taken for a ride. <laughs> the most dangerous translations of the Quran in the world today are those in English. <laughs> and after English are the translations in other European languages. The best translations that you can find are the translations in languages which belong to our civilization. Like Farsi like Urdu. Hmm? However, the one who is translating sometimes does not penetrate the meaning of the verse. And if I had the time, I don't. I could give you some examples of how the translator because he has not penetrated the meaning of the verse he translates it wrong and now because you cannot read the Arabic you are not able to recognize that what this man has written is wrong so I advise you to learn sufficient Arabic to be able to understand at least the surface meaning 
of the Quran. But I have another warning to give. And that is, the Imam is reciting the Quran in Salat. When the Salat is over, someone asks you, what did he say? And you reply and you say, I don't know, but it was a nice tune. Huh? I don't know, but it was a nice tune. I like the tune. If you remain like that, you are disrespecting the word of Allah. And whoever disrespects the word of Allah is disrespecting Allah. Then I have to come back another night <laughs> we can, we can to answer it. all the yeah. questions. Yeah. Yeah. We still have another four minutes here. Yeah. I've got another uh, four questions. Forty questions. Now we are replacing the collapse of the international financial system. Do you know that this is the beginning of the collapse of the legal system? No. The question is, we are, we are witnessing now before our eyes the collapse of the international financial system, actually the international monetary system. The monetary system and the financial system are two different things. We are witnessing before our eyes the collapse of the monetary system. The last thing I heard about the US dollar is that it is in ICU, intensive care unit of the hospital, on life support system, <laughs> and the US dollar is about to die. Hmm? All that they need is a big war, a big event, like a nuclear explosion in an American city. Hmm? And they will use that event to demonetize, demonetize the US dollar. Meaning, you cannot use the US dollar as legal tender. You cannot use it to buy and sell. And then, uh, <laughs> and then they will replace it with something else which you can exchange at maybe five cents to the dollar. So this is a sign of the collapse that is taking place of the international monetary system. However, there is something else which has replaced it already. Paper money is on its way out. And paper money is already being replaced by something far more dangerous. And that is electronic money. The banking system will now control the world. And the Zionists control the banking system. So what we have before us is a financial and monetary Guantanamo around the corner. What do we do? My response is, you got to get out of their system. You've got to restore the Sunnah. And when you restore the Sunnah, you will not be a slave. When you restore the Sunnah, you will still have the power to be able to fight the battle for justice over injustice. Next question. You say that we should set up a small market where people go to use money as media for a city. What if you need other commodities to have food, like clothes, cars, houses, etc.? If you want to buy a Mercedes-Benz in our little kampung, way out in the remote countryside, we will suggest to you to take the first flight back to KL, but make it a one-way ticket. <laughs> make, make it a one-way ticket, okay? At least, at least, we are making an effort. We say, if you have a better idea, come put it on the table. 
If you have a better response, come bring it and put it on the table. And we would be happy to examine it, to respond to it. But until such time, this is our suggestion. To build a community free from riba. Read. The question is, if you are in Java and there is a shortage of dinar and dirham, why do you have to use nasi? Is it nasi? Poras. Poras. Nasi is when you cook it. Ah, peras. Why do you have to use peras as money? Huh? The answer is here. In this booklet, we don't have the time now, time up. It's called the Gold Dinar and Silver Dirham, Islam and the Future of Money. And the books are all outside there. What is your view of Islamic banking? Oh my gosh. Oh, oh. <laughs> Trouble. Trouble now. Now we don't have the time. To answer, that's a very important question. That's a very important question. If you want to continue until 9.30, we can continue. You must... I don't sleep another three hours. All right, let's go until 9.30. Is that okay, everybody? Okay? Bule? Bule. No, what I've found is from the time you have the salah, they all go. See here, 8 to 10. Oh, 8 to 10. <laughs> According to our Nazir, this advertisement says from 810 or 890 as the Sheikh was talking about. Al-Adi, can we, can we consider. No, 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 let me take Islamic banking. <laughs> Islamic banking. Okay. Nabi Muhammad. Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam would sometimes go to the shop and buy buy goods but he would not have the money to pay so the shopkeeper would give him the goods and he would promise to pay the money later This is called credit, a credit transaction, bay mu'ajjal, a credit transaction. So a credit transaction to buy now, pay later, is halal, it is sunnah. However, however, the shopkeeper was not allowed. He was not allowed. Because he had to wait for his money, he was not allowed to raise the price. No. If you can raise the price because you have to wait for the money, then money can grow because of time. No, that's riba. Money cannot grow because of time. That is riba. So, a credit transaction is permissible provided that the credit price and the cash price are the same. There can be no increase in credit price over cash price. If the credit price is higher than the cash price, 
then the difference between the two would be riba. What Islamic banks around the world are doing is that they say you want to buy a house and you do not have the money to pay cash. The cash price is can you buy a house for 50,000? No, no. 500,000? Yeah. Okay, that's better. The cash price for the house is 500,000. Bring it. In uh, uh, Damansara Mutiara. And you don't have the 500,000. So the Islamic bank says, no problem. We will buy the house for 500,000. That, therefore, is the cash price. You can't change that. Don't try. That's the cash price. Anybody could buy it for 500,000. So that's the cash price. But we will sell that same house to you now on credit. We give you 20 years to pay. But our credit price is now twice the cash price. One million. Because you have to wait for your money for 20 years. Hmm? The difference between the credit price which is one million and the cash price which is five hundred thousand the difference between the two is riba but the Islamic bank says no this is something called murabaha murabaha is a transaction in which Something is sold at a profit and both the buyer and the seller know the amount of profit and accept it. But this is not Murabaha. No. If it was a cash transaction, yes. But this is a credit transaction. And because it is a credit transaction, the difference between the credit price and the cash price is riba. I call it riba to the back door. And if you want to defer with me, no problem. If people want to use Islamic banks, sure, they can do that. Yeah, that's your choice. But if you say I am wrong and you want to silence me and you want to ban me and you come after me with boxing gloves remember that I can challenge you. Just remember that. If you get paid interest by bank without our knowledge what do we do about it? What do you do with riba money? Huh? You have 10,000 ringgits riba money and you want to know what to do with the money of course you can't use it yourself huh? no it's haram for you and you can't give it to others because haram for them as well haram for everybody Haram for the rich, haram for the poor. Haram for the white, haram for the black. Haram for everybody. Haram for Muslim, haram for Hindus, haram for Christians, haram for Jews. Everybody, all human beings. Allah made it haram for everybody. So what can you do with the riba money? I will tell you what I would do and then you choose what you want to do. This is what I will do. I will invite all my family members and bring all the children 
close to the time of Maghrib. And then when it is dark, I will show the money to everybody and explain this is haram money, riba money. And then I'll tell them, look at what I'm going to do with this. And then I'll ask them, turn off the lights. So the whole place is dark. Then I'll take the match and light a fire and burn that money. All the children are going to be looking with their eyes big like this. And as long as they live, they will never forget. Never, never, never forget that this money is haram. In the time before the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam a flood came and broke down the walls of the Kaaba and the Quraysh had to rebuild the Kaaba at that time they were worshipping idols made of wood and stone and it is recorded in the books of Sira that those idol worshipping Arabs gave the order that we will not accept any riba money for rebuilding the Kaaba. Today we live in a different world. You want to build a masjid and you're asking for donations. The bank manager comes. You say, brother, just write a check. <laughs> just write the check. We don't care where the money comes from. But those Arabs who worship the idols and stones, they said, we will not accept any riba money. Who has more faith? The Arab who worships the idols? Or we who say we are Muslims and have the Quran? Who has more faith? Yeah. Okay, next one. This one is from, I think, another book of yours. There are opinions that they are too smart, too, they are too big, that they are positioned to each other, and they, they do destruction in this world. Can it be possible that the Jah concept would be a tool of the Adu Jah to give them reason for a clash, since the Adu explicitly uh, mentioned in the Quran of the Jah? Wouldn't it be possible that this Jah concept be implanted into the concept now this this question does not put, pertain to riba uh, I am leaving Malaysia inshallah in a few days time but I'll be returning inshallah in about two to three weeks time inshallah when I come back what we will do is to organize one session for only questions and answers only questions and answers okay and on that occasion we will take up these questions okay one more question no we don't <laughs> no you, you no no nobody asks my permission oh, okay. nobody <laughs> nobody contacted me and asked me sheikh can we have it from 8 to 10 o'clock Nobody asks that permission for me. I have to travel. Oh, I see. Yes. I think I unfortunately have so many more. Yeah, okay. No, we have, we'll have a session exclusively for questions and answers, inshallah. And on that occasion, anybody can ask any question. We can have it for the whole day, inshallah. Whole day. Yeah. One Islamic banking, the Islamic bank said that two transactions in one sale, that is two sales in one transaction is haram. How do we, how can we buy house in this modern day? Is it halal to possess a credit card from the Islamic bank? Oh, well, let us take only that part of the question which pertains to credit cards. Okay? 
there is an answer to that question at the back of this book we have a section a chapter dealing with questions and answers and in that chapter I have answered the question about credit cards what is a credit card and how does it differ from a debit card a debit card is when I am using my own money my own money a credit card is when I'm not using my money I'm using somebody else's money and that person is offering the money to me as a loan so that person is a money lender so I am accepting money from a money lender every time I use my credit card the money lender says to me that I will not charge you interest if you repay me within a certain period of time but if you fail to repay then you will be obliged to pay me the interest do you agree to that you have to agree to that before I can give you the card so you say to him yes I agree I agree that if I fail to pay within a certain time then I would be legally obliged to pay the interest how can you agree to that would you agree if the money lender says if you fail to pay on time you will have to drink a glass of whiskey huh what did you say I am lending this money to you on the condition that you must repay the money to me within so many days but if you fail to repay you'll have to drink a glass of whiskey do you agree would you say no no nobody 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 I am lending this money to you on this condition that you must repay the money to me within so many days and if you do not then you will have to commit Zina would you agree to that contract nobody will agree well I have news for you that in agreeing to pay the interest this is worse than drinking the whiskey in agreeing to pay the interest this is worse than committing zina so the contract is haram whether you repay the loan on time or you don't you have already entered into a contract which is haram so do not use anybody else's money on this condition